good evening everyone i'm sorry i'm extremely sorry for the interruption and uh, um, i was still having difficulty in my computer so basically this topic genetics in thyroid malignancy um it is a topic which we should uh, there are so many genes involved in thyroid malignancy so uh, basically we should know what are all the genes involved in various types of thyroid malignancy and uh, knowing that what can we do what we will be doing is we will use the gene for the diagnostic purpose as well as use the genetic pathways for tyrosine kinase inhibitors so let's see what's what are the important genes so this is basically a cell cycle now if we know the cell cycle we will know the genes acting in various pathways so first a cell as you know uh, it will start in the mitotic phase and goes to the gap one synthetic phase and g2 that is gap 2 so what happens in synthetic phase is s phase which is dna is getting replicated so um, m phase is a mitotic phase so the most important step here is so here uh, if you see that all the tumor suppressor genes and all, also our onco genes acts in this gap one to the synthetic phase that is synthetic phase is nothing but dna replication stage so in before the dna replicates a tumor suppressor will actually cut off the cell cycle and cause a cell death so what is uh, our onco gene doing is all those genes which are involved in cancer which are called proto onco genes these genes will enhance this phase causing the cell to jump from g1 to synthetic phase hence it gets to a replication in a multiple multi that is in an amplified manner a cell gets mitotically activated and it causes tumor progression and prove tumor differentiation so the various gene involved in papillary carcinoma thyroid follicular carcinoma poorly differentiated carcinomas and anaplastic carcinomas in papillary carcinoma the most common gene as you all know is the braf gene braf gene causes 45% it is the prevalence is 45% others are red ptc rash and trk and so in follicular carcinoma whereas what is most common is is rash so other genes are pax8 and ppar and p10 and p phosphatidylinositol 3 gene so in poorly differentiated and anaplastic if you see the most important gene involved is p53 and beta catenin so rest b rash and rash are all same so in p papillary what we should remember is braf and red ptc in follicular it is rash and poorly differentiated and anaplastic it is important to remember it is p53 and beta catenin so all these genes are all involved in all these carcinomas so what is the model of thyroid carcinogenesis that is in thyroid alone there is always a step wise progression as you know from most of the cases from follicular adenoma carcinomas or papillary carcinomas and then gets fully differentiated and then gets anaplastic so the basic for this is two proposed theories are fetal cell theory so if you see the thyroid gets converted to follicular adenoma follicular carcinoma and anaplastic so this step wise progression is also regulated by the genes genes involved here are it causes uh, when there is mutation in this gene the cell the tumor will progress to the next stage so uh, the genes involved here if you watch the same red ptc papillary carcinomas braf trk met uh, in diagnosing papillary carcinoma in uh, these molecular testing which upon these genes so finally in anaplastic <coughs> or poorly differentiated it is p21 or p50 uh signaling pathways so what is the signaling pathways is if we know the signaling pathways there are only three important signaling pathways in thyroid cancer if we know this pathway we will know the various drugs which we are giving for the thyroid cancer where this uh, drugs act so these signals proliferation and apoptosis map k and phosphatidyl inositol pathways so map k and phosphatidyl inositol are map k is involved in gene expression proliferation differentiation and cell death whereas phosphatidyl inositol is uh, involved in glucose regulation survival adaptation and cell motility that is map k is dna proliferation and cell proliferation whereas the other pathway phosphatidyl inositol pathway is for movement of cell to retain the cell survival so what is map k pathway is mitogen activated pathway so in this pathway if you see the receptor is epidermal growth factor receptor 
in this receptor when the growth factor attaches it will activate a stepwise progression it causes stepwise progression and it will causes activation of all these proteins which will signal the cell to cause multiplication so mm, the various small small proteins involved in this are krash next will be braf next will be mek and erk so normal cell will have this in regulated manner it will not be in an activated way this is a next pathway next pathway here is phosphorylated inositol pathway where the step is akt and mtar mtar is mammalian target of rapamycin so these are the two important pathways another pathway is wnt in this pathway what we have to remember is beta catenin that is cell adhesion pathway among the genes involved here the gene uh, recently which is all uh, involved in thyroid cancer which are all diagnosed was bcl2 associated x and x ray repair cross complementing group that is xrcc1 xrcc3 xpo5 that is export in 5 interleukin 10 and and braf and red so what we should remember is these bags bags is involved in mitochondrial apoptotic signaling pathway so xrcc is involved in base excision repair pathway so in all these tumor there will be base excision repair pathway will be um, it will be not happen so the base excision will not get repaired and will go on so on and continue to proliferate so next is xrcc3 that is the pathway involved in another repair then is XP, xpo5 which is uh, a micro rna involved so the what commonly asks is braf this is itself is asked in, as an uh, five mark in our uh, mch exam so braf is commonly involved in papillary thyroid cancer so what is braf braf is a proto oncogene so braf will have exon any gene will have an exon so in that exon you will have multiple codons if you see the what is v600e what is v600e is that 600 is the 600 codon so in that 615th exon and 600 codon there is a single base chain which is a point mutation so braf is a proto oncogene v600e is nothing but one single base is changing that is a glutamine is changing to valine so because of this single change what happens is our routine pathway is not happening and it causes the cell to go in an exaggerated manner and and that pathway which we have seen map k pathway will be pro, will 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 be increased to 500 times so next is a rash gene uh, so uh, sorry in so there is a strong association of this braf in high iron intake area and chemical exposure it is recently shown that there is strong association between this intake and uh, iron intake and chemical exposure next is a gerat gene um, rash gene is nothing but a g protein so what are the types of rash involved are n h and k rash so all these three rash among these three rash important is n rash which is 72% so risk of malignancy is more in h rash so what is when when you find a rash in a tumor what it signals to us is it causes progression from benign tumor to a carcinoma especially in case of follicular carcinoma next is a common red ptc so till now what we have seen is a proto oncogene activation so next is a chromosomal rearrangement that is in red chromosome and ptc chromosome causes fusion so this is fusion of these two genes causing chromosomal rearrangement so what are the types of red commonly seen red types are 1 2 and 3 so red ptc1 red ptc2 and red ptc3 this is mostly involved in radiation induced thyroid cancers and commonly involved in children children and adolescents and radiation associated but here you see often you what you see is classical ptc so what are the other forms uh, other forms are 5 6 7 8 and 9 10 so what we have to remember is important is 1 2 and 3 next is the pax8 ppar gene this is also a fusion chromosomal arrangement rearrangement so the risk of malignancy if you have this is close to 95% so pax8 is nothing but a transcription factor which helps dna proliferation hence if you see thyroglobulin peroxidase and nis if you remember these are involved in our physiology so the all these proteins all these gene expression will be extremely multiplied if you have a mutation in this pax8 another is the pprg which is nothing but peroxisome proliferated activator receptor so when this is activated the cell will grow it causes cell differentiation inhibition of apoptosis other genes involved are p53 which blocks the cell cycle in g1 phase trt which is common and that is the enzyme telomerase gene 
this is responsible for this what is enzyme telomerase this enzyme telomerase is some essential for telomer elongation and dna replication so this is mostly involved in poly differentiated and anaplastic carcinomas ntrk is another uh, gene which is involved in pediatric tumors where patient will have more frequent lymph node metastasis so what we commonly see are in somatic and hereditary forms what we commonly see is somatic forms what is this somatic and what is this hereditary genes are if you see hereditary in all cases of familial tumors this will be transferred from one generation to next generation whereas in somatic mutation it is only you can find that in the tissue if you have for example fnac or histopathology in that tissue you can see all these somatic genes somatic uh -huh. mutations are there in the tissue whereas germ line that is hereditary mutations are there you can test in the blood of the patient or their relatives so what in those uh, familial forms for example familial medullary thyroid carcinomas as you know the common gene involved is red so uh, here in inherited papillary thyroid carcinomas what are the syndromes commonly familial syndromes associated with papillary thyroid carcinomas are penred syndrome intestinal polyposis syndrome pues jagger syndrome hamartosis syndrome and werner syndrome so if you see uh, in uh, penred syndrome that uh, gene involved is pds intestinal polyposis syndrome the gene involved is apc and pues jagger the gene involved is stk11 p10 is hamartoma tumor syndrome p10 another uh, a gene is werner syndrome wrn so uh, commonly now recently uh, micro rnas have been involved testing these micro -RNAs. what are these micro rnas are they causes extra uh, in a in a in a dna there will be some exons which which should be deleted but these micro rnas causes this inclusion of this exon which should be deleted and causes cell proliferation this is micro rna so there are some micro rnas which are increase expression some are decrease expression so you have to remember at least two two in these in case of papillary common number is 221 and 222 in case of follicular the common number is 192 and 197 in case of atc the common number is 17 to 92 so why are we knowing why are we knowing all these genes are they are very clinically important to us because if you find b rash then you can prognosticate the tumor and also you can in increase your surgical aggressiveness for example if you find brf then you have to go one stage higher not only total thyroidectomy you should do nodal dissection why because brf causes higher stage of presentation higher rate of tumor recurrence and higher rate of uh, extra thyroidal extension and causes de differentiation and less iron uptake what is red ptc red ptc will do will causes uh, expression in the younger age group but they will have classical papillary carcinomas frequent lymph node metastasis but they will have lower stage lower stage but lymph node metastasis will be more in uh, in case of rash which is common in follicular it causes more distant metastasis as we see in follicular carcinomas next so pax8 ppar and phosphorinositol pathway all these causes in younger age group younger age group will have more frequent vascular invasion small tumor size so if this happens you should you should suspect pax8 ppar gene involvement so what is the diagnostic value why are we knowing all these genes because recent days although it is not yet available in india it will be uh, coming very soon what uh, we as we do fnac the, the rate of doing total thyroidectomy has been so much increased but the morbidity if we have uh, we can have problem in parathyroid and recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement still there are all many chances so how to avoid unnecessary surgeries if you have uh, suppose in fnac if you have aus flus and suspicious of papillary carcinoma if you have all these three then it is called as indeterminate fnac so in indeterminate fnac if you have a dilemma of uh, whether you have to recommend surgery or not for example if you have a benign ultrasound because all not you should not only correlate with fna you should correlate your clinical features you should co correlate your ultrasound features and no fna so when you combine all these three suppose you have an benign thing in ultrasound but your fnac is flus so should we have to recommend surgery or not in these situations what was uh, shown in all these studies was a molecular uh, studies can be used as molecular diagnostic methods can be used as a preoperative marker to recommend a surgery for the patient so even this has come in guidelines that in case of indeterminate fnacs we can do all these three genes all these five genes 
in that fna sample and recommend surgery for the patient so this was initiated by nikiforo et al in 2011 when they have uh, in 1100 and 1056 fna samples they have tested and all these five genes braf rash red ptc 1 to 3 and pax8 ppar these uh, genes are tested in the fna sample so when you test these genes suppose if it comes as positive then what is the chances of having it to be truly positive so here comes uh, in indeterminate cytology uh, what is the cancer risk so there are rule out test and rule in test this is commonly asked what is rule out test and rule in test rule in test is if you find mutation in those five genes then it is called rule in test that is you are ruling in cancers for uh, what is rule out test rule out test there will be set of uh, micro rnas and gene expressions that is they will test multiple genes and around 163 genes are tested and among these they will have a scoring system and they will find, say that if you have this much of score then they will rule out cancers so rule in test and rule out test rule in test if you have positive then you have to recommend oral therapy with the patient suppose if the patient is having negative gec that is negative rule out test if they are if you are ruling out malignancy then you can avoid surgery if you have positive mutation then you are recommending surgery that is rule in test so when you find braf when you find braf then you go ahead with prophylactic nodal dissection as you do for red red and braf if you find then you have to do with nodal dis- dissection rest are the things pax8 red ptc if you find then you have to recommend oral thyroidectomy so tyrosine kinase inhibitors you will hear it next in detail way um, these uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors will act along the pathways which i have said before they will act along the mek pathways so the tyrosine kinase inhibitors will act and it will causes um stop that is act when this activation of pathway will be stopped so sorafenib acts in red pdgfr vegfr sunitil which is also commonly used acts in red pdgfr and vegfr so in medullary thyroid carcinoma common gene involved is rearranged in transfection that is red gene red gene is also a proto oncogene which will have 21 exons and among that in each exon there are multiple codons involved in one on one each exon so when you have mutations in that particular codon you will have the syndrome so what is this red red is nothing but if you see in the figure the tyrosine kinase receptor so it will activate the tyrosine kinase red proto oncogene causes this membrane tyrosine receptor a uh, protein to enhance proliferation of this receptor so in various syndrome if you see men 2a and 2b in 2a the involved domain is the cysteine codon cysteine codon and the 2b the involved domain is a tyrosine kinase domain so we what we have to remember in this is men 2a and men 2b the commonly involved codon and the exons as you see men 2b is one important gene codon is 918 and common men 2a is 734 734 and 631 are the common codons involved as we see in clinical setting thank you